am Alyssa Horscroft. I'm the technical director of the Avon Theatre. My responsibility is to have enough knowledge um, to be able to interact with uh, the designers, my heads of department who specialize in their specific areas, and the director. The first thing uh, I do is meet uh, with the designers. First one in is generally the set designer. Um, so I get an idea of them from uh, so starting with one show of what what their concept is, um, what the physical space that they take up um, with their set is going to be. And then the next show comes in and says what their design is and what space they want to take up. And you better believe that 50% of it will be the exact same space as the previous show wants to take up. And then you begin to get into a negotiation of how to alter their design so that they work together. Then the third show comes in. Um, and then you really start flailing. Because I in all honesty, to fit uh, three shows into, uh, into a, a space and getting them all to compromise to work together is a significant balancing act. Right from the very beginning, we're having to look at the issue of storage because it affects how we build pieces. So that's one of the real challenges of building for repertory theater is it's not just being built to put on the stage and stay there, it's being built to put on the stage, come apart, go somewhere else, come back, go back together, and to do that um, like 200 times. The pool in Grapes of Wrath was an interesting challenge on a number of different levels. Um, it has a grate that goes over it, uh, which is a lid, which um, through the majority of the show has to act as floor because people walk all over it. Then the grate uh, in the Colorado River scene, the grate lowers down and it becomes a giant pool. And then at the end of the scene, the lid comes back up, it locks into place, and then it's floor again. Now, that pool, when we're not in Grapes of Wrath, then gets emptied into a holding tank that we have under the stage. The reason we do this um, is because in that holding tank, we can filter the water, we can treat it with UV, we can treat it with chlorine and, and heat it. So when it's not actually in the deck, the water's going through that process of being treated. So we empty the tank after every show, we refill it before every show. My instinct is right now, they're not gonna wanna be doing that with a full pool. So what I wanna be able to do is this afternoon, once Anthony has seen it and kinda got, oh uh, yeah, let's try it, let's, I want us to be able to drain the pool so that they can reverse with it at a lower level. One of the most interesting aspects I found um, working on Grapes of Wrath was uh, dealing with the truck, which becomes another character uh, in the piece. It's constantly on stage. The Jode family is um, in it through half the show, traveling um, across the country is always the fear of whether it's gonna make it or not. The thing that I think will surprise a lot of people is that truck is moved by three guys behind it and they're constantly, through rehearsals, they were constantly working to find what angle they had to push and pull from. We attached handles to the truck so that they could grab them. We made certain parts more solid so that they could push and pull. And right throughout that process, Anthony Cimolino, who directed the show, was really very aware in rehearsals that while, yes, he was dealing with all the actors, he also had um, three stagehands who were working together to move this additional giant one-ton character that then, of course, we threw 13 people on top of and they had to still continue to move it. We're, God, we're talking, they're probably moving at times maybe up to 3,000 pounds. And so we worked very closely with the lighting designer as well. So we were very careful at bringing lights down at times to hide them so as the truck spins around. And we also used um, the musicians in the show to mask them. So the musicians would cross at a certain point to mask the fact that there's a stagehand coming down dressed all in black. And I was very lucky to have three amazing stagehands who communicated so well with each other um, as so well with me and also our lighting designer Stephen Hawkins and our director Anthony Cimolino because everybody worked as a team on making that happen. 
the number of people who go, well, it's in a track, right? So the truck moves in a track. No, it doesn't. Three guys just making it turn on a dime, and they're brilliant. The truck is another character in the show, right? So he was, he was very much um, uh, concentrated on um, how it moved as much as any of the other performers. So as I said, we spent time on it. <laughs> we made uh, a lot of changes, actually, to um, lights and sound and video this year um, to be presenting Jesus Christ Superstar. The amount of lights in the actual set are overwhelming and I've been working with our head electrician since last September to to make that work. One of the things that we had to introduce was a second programming board so this is the first year we actually through our lighting queuing sessions had two programming boards one which concentrated entirely on LEDs and moving lights. So we had four additional moving lights in the rig than we usually did uh, which isn't extensive. There's a lot of theaters with a lot more moving lights than we have. But it was a show where we knew they were going to be used extensively. Um, and the amount of LEDs we have in the set is also pretty extensive. So we're um, uh, moving to a new world in, in a way. Instead of having your normal incandescent light, which has a gel on it, um, we now have an LED light, which has the potential of thousands of different colors and nuances. So it increases the technology required, the time required to program. So one person concentrated on that. And then we had another operator who concentrated entirely on what we call our conventional fixtures. Repertory theater also uh, presents a number of other challenges, one of which is actually um, going on right behind me right now as we're about to go into Jesus Christ Superstar, and our video isn't working exactly as we would like it to do. We know what our backup is. We know it will be working ultimately for the show because we'll be doing it manually, but the automated version of it uh, appears to not wanting to um, uh, make an appearance. Generally, when you have one show in a theater and you end a show and everybody goes home and you come in the next day to do the next show, you start up again and more often than not, everything's exactly as it was the day before. Our challenge, because everything unplugs and that plugs back together and we do a different show in between and we do lighting cues for a different show in between and we have different shows sort of brought into the board, a anything could happen in between. There's a great moment in the process, especially on Jesus Christ Superstar, actually, because, um, uh, because I have a long history with it, technically, and there was a lot going on. There was a certain first previews where I sat there nervous, and in the last 10 minutes, I held my breath, and I was on the edge of my seat. And um, now, I don't do that anymore. I know it works. I know it's great. And it was just, it was great to watch, and great to watch the performances. It has become a show that engrosses you. Grapes of Wrath, I would say the same. I left Grapes of Wrath at a certain point where it was still a tech issue, and then when I went to see it on opening, 17 shows later, it was a different show, and man, did I love it. And a little bit of time gave me that distance to just watch it as a show and go, this is good.